All right, guys, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the washers real quick. And the washers, they just simply go, you see where the stud's at? You just slide it right over the stud. That's all you're going to do. And then uh, you're going to also, before you install the washer, you're going to want to make sure you put ARP lubrication on the top part of the washer, okay? So just a quick FYI on that. After you put the washers on, you can then proceed to put on the 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 nuts and then the same deal you're going to want to put the arp lubrication on the bottom of the nut and then you're going to turn them on by hand tight and then you're going to torque them in the correct sequence to the to the correct uh foot pound rating which is i believe 90 foot pounds all right so i got arp uh, lubrication on all the washers and the bolts i also have them on the studs already down there now i'm going to put the washers in first and then the bolts all right, so all the washers are installed now. Get the bolts, put them on, and we'll go ahead and start uh, torquing them down. All right, guys, so don't forget, whenever you're torquing down your, your head bolts, uh, you're gonna do them in the sequence. Uh, the sequence is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's gonna come down to seven, eight, nine, and then 10, okay? I believe that's the correct torque sequence. I'm gonna post up the picture of the of the of the sequence as well as the uh ARP's foot pound rating for the for the bolts. But you're gonna want to do that sequence three times. Uh the reason why you do it three times is to make sure it has a the heads have an even clamp force across all the cylinder bolts. And you're gonna be doing them in the same pass I just showed you guys, but you're gonna do that three times. So the first pass is gonna be 30 foot pounds, the second pass is gonna be 60 foot pounds, and then the final pass, which is your 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 90 foot pounds. And after you do your your three passes, that's it. Your heads are torqued in, in place, and they're ready to go. All right, so the heads are torqued in place, uh, 90 foot pounds. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys how to do now is how to check your valve clearance, okay? So, checking valve clearance can be pretty tricky, uh, especially if it's going to be your first time doing it. But, uh, I'll go ahead and, you know, I'm going to explain to you guys why it's important, how to do it, and how to get the correct measurements right now. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my intake cam, and I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys how to do the intakes. Uh, the valve flash, I'll know how to check them. here all of these are numbered okay all of them so uh this like for example this dude has to go in a certain way this dude goes in the arrow facing towards the engine like that okay so once you i'll show you guys right now but you're gonna want this arrow facing this way towards the towards the, the, the cam phasers uh these little caps right here these caps, they all belong to a certain spot, okay? So like on this cap, it says exhaust one, um, exhaust two, exhaust three, and exhaust four. This is intake one, intake two, intake three, and intake four. It has I4, uh, I3, I2, and I1. So if you ever uh, forget where they go, they have, it's uh, printed on the cap already. All right, guys, so... Uh, I do have the ARP uh, cam tower stud kit. So the cam tower stud kit comes of course with the small studs and then you have these uh, bigger studs right here. These bigger studs, uh, of course, they go up on the top right here. One, two, three, and four. That's where your four big studs go. And then the smaller studs, uh, they go they go along the little cam, uh, cam holders. So whenever you're installing these, ARP says to, you know, again, you're just going to want them finger tight. So if I were to just, you know, use my finger to, if I want to take it out, see how it just wants to come out, that one? You just want it finger tight, okay? That's all you're going to do with these. It's the same as everything else as ARP says to do. Um, these right here, they come with a washer and a nut, okay? So you're gonna get washers and nuts for that. And then you're gonna get, of course, your bigger washers and nuts right here. And then also, don't forget to order uh, bearings uh, for your cam because um, 
your intake cam doesn't take any bearings at all, okay? Your exhaust cam, it takes a bearing right here, okay? And this is the only bearing that you're going to have in the head assembly, cam. okay? Just this guy right here. Uh, right here and then uh, up right there. Those are the only places you're going to have bearings at in the heads. Or I forget, um, tools you're going to need. Um, feeler gauges a 22 socket a large wrench um what else extension this is a 10 millimeter uh 12 point this is a, another 12 point this is a 5 16 12 point and this is going to be a magnet you want the magnet uh just to pull up the uh pull up your uh what's it called your bucket lifters so yeah those are the only tools you're gonna really need and the torque wrench i forgot torque wrench because uh, you, you do have to torque these down to 105 inch-pounds or something like that. And then these guys go down to 205 inch-pounds. Uh, I'm going to post up the picture on how to uh, how to torque them down correctly and everything. But uh, yeah, those are the tools you're going to need. Alright guys, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to check uh, what size your bucket lifter is. Um, all you're going to do is pull it out and... Underneath the bucket lifter, it's going to give you numbers and that 3.255 or 3 whatever, that's your bucket lifter size, okay? And just keep in mind that they sell these bucket lifters in 0 0.015 increments. So when you order them on Hyundai, they only come in uh, those increments, okay? So like, for example, the next size down would be 3.240 and the next size up will be 3.270. So that's how you read the, the bucket lifter size. All right, so I got everything nicely, nice and even and torqued down all across. Now what I can do is uh, check my valve clearances. So um, I don't know what stock, I don't know what stock um, valve clearances are for intake and exhaust cams, but you guys can look it up in y'all's service manual uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, what the valve clearance is, okay? So on the GSC cams, the valve clearance on the intake side calls for uh, 0 0.09 to 0 0.11 thousandths of an inch. And then on the exhaust cam, it calls for 0 0.11 to 0 0.13 thousandths of an inch on the exhaust cam. So those are my, those are the clearances I'm trying to aim for. All right, so this is where the feeler gauge comes in now. Um, feeler gauges come in a variety of sizes. Uh, this one goes from 0 0.006 to point, uh, point 0.40. Uh, for example, right here it says 0 0.006 thousandths of an inch. Um, it also has a it also has um, millimeters as well. Okay, all right. This one it's all right. I, I kind of use this one just for backup. The one I really use is this one. And the reason why I use this one is because it shows you the exact uh, millimeter to thousandths of an inch, like the, the ratio. And this is what I like to use to figure out um, how to get the correct size. And I'm going to show you guys later what I'm talking about. But this is the one I like to use because it has the, you know, like 127 millimeters and five thousandths of an inch, right? So um, we're going to go to... Let me see. We're gonna do our intake side, so it's gonna be nine thousandths of an inch. So it's gonna be this guy right here, right? Nine thousandths of an inch. And we're gonna have our ten thousand, and we're gonna have our eleven thousand. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, use these three guys, and we're gonna check our clearances on here right now. Valve clearances. Uh, you see how you have your bucket lifter right here. And then you have your um, your cam lobes. These cam lobes push down on the bucket lifters, correct? And when they push down on the bucket lifters, it pushes down to in the intake or the valve, and it opens up. Okay. So what valve clearance is is the clearance between the bucket lifter and uh, the lobe, the cam lobe. As it's facing away okay you want to know that clearance because if it's touching then essentially your, your valves open all the time and that's what you don't want to have 
then you'd be having a, a leaky valve. So you want, it's crucial to check your valve clearances whenever you're rebuilding an engine or, you know, any of that kind of scenario, okay? Um, like right now, this one is open and this one is closed. And you can tell it's closed because it's facing towards me like this. On a Genesis Cube, it has to face towards you like that. And if it was on the exhaust side, it'd be facing that way. Thousandth of an inch, which is your least amount that you can clear. And you're gonna go ahead and run it through, okay? Now you see how it's not going through right here? That means it is too tight, and that means that this intake valve is probably open. I'm gonna go through here, same thing, too tight. So, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go down a size 2.008, and I'm gonna try that one. Eight, and now check this out. You see how it goes through smoothly? That's, that's the correct valve clearance, 0 0.008. So these guys, are just a little too tight, that means I just have to go down one size. So whatever these bucket sizes are, whatever they are, you just have to go down one size and you'll get your clearances. Or you'll get you'll get your target clearance, okay? So whenever you're checking your valve clearance, you're gonna wanna make sure it slides freely. You're gonna have a very, very little drag, and that's fine. It's, you're supposed to feel a little drag uh all right so we're on our next one these two guys right here they're facing up so these two are next to check for clearance 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 goes straight through so that's good 0 0.11 which is my max tolerance and 0 0.11 does not go through so this is within spec go on to our next one 0 0.9 and that is too tight. So this is not within clearance. So now we're gonna go down to a smaller size until that smaller size fits in here, okay? All right, so 0 0.004 is the one that fit. So this is where you're gonna have to do some math, okay? So if it's out of clearance like that and it's by a lot, then you're gonna have to get a notebook and piece of paper, pen, whatever, right? come over here all right so we got our notebook pen and this is what we're gonna do so it was zero zero four that fit okay so we're gonna write down zero zero four and then we're also gonna write down um uh, 0.102 millimeters okay we're gonna write both of those down in here okay all right so this is how you how i essentially did it and how i got all my sizes correct um so we did intake bucket eight, okay? That's the one that had the the crazy amount of uh, uh, lash that was, that was offset it, okay? So intake bucket eight was size 3.300. I showed you guys how to check the size on the bucket lifter uh, earlier. So you get that size right, and you just save it for later. So 0 0.04 was the feeler gauge that fit in there nicely, okay? Uh, very little drag. Uh, 0 0.04 is equivalent to 102 millimeters. And this is our target right here, which is 009, 0 0.009, which is equivalent to 0.229 millimeters. So you grab the millimeters, right? You grab your millimeters, and what you're gonna do is just subtract them. So you're gonna do 229 minus 102 is 0.127 millimeters. And now you're gonna use your size, your bucket size, bring it down right here, and then you're gonna do 3.300 millimeters, that's, that's what it's in, minus 1 point, or 0.127 millimeters, which is the answer from right here. And you get this right here, which is your answer, your correct size for the clearance. So it's gonna be 3.173. Now remember I told you guys they sell the buckets, or they sell the, the bucket lifters and 0.15 increments. So what you're gonna have to do is go on Hyundai's website and look up uh, the closest increments to 3.173. So you got 3.180 and you got 3.165.
So you're like, okay, so which one do I choose? You're gonna wanna choose the increment that is that has less. Why? Because it's always safer to have a little bit more looseness than it is to have tightness. Because if you get something and it's still tight, then that means your valve is gonna stay open. And that's the last thing you want. So it's always better to be a little loose than it is to be tight. So just a quick FYI. But majority of the time, it's always gonna be the, the number that's a little bit looser. So in our, in our case, it's 3.165. And that's the, the size that we need to order from Hyundai. So you do that to all the lifters that are incorrect on here, and you just do the same problem if they're incorrect, okay? Uh, of course, if it's just by, you know, by, by 0 0.001, then you're just gonna go down one size. That's all you're gonna do uh, on the increments. So I really hope this helped you guys out. Um, it helped me out. It, I know it's not the you know, ideal. It's not the best way to do it, but it worked for me. Um, and I got all of my sizes correct. So, yep, those are, that's what I got for bucket lift number eight. I ordered that size. When it gets here, I'll, I'll swap it in and I'm gonna double check it, make sure it's correct. Cause it, you know, it's crucial that you check your valve clearances. Cause if not, like I said before, you're gonna have an open valve and that's the last thing you're gonna want. Cause you're not gonna make any compression. So, that's how you check your valve clearances and that's how you get the correct valve clearance. Okay guys? So I hope this helped you guys out. Um, when my bucket lifters get here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the install, which is installing the cams, rechecking my clearances, putting on the timing chain. And once the timing chain is on, that is it. All I need to do is put on the timing cover, the valve cover, and that is it. This engine will be 100% done and ready to fire up. And hopefully, I want to aim for about 700, 750. It's kind of the same where I left off at, but I mean, because I didn't get the 10 bolt main girdle made, and because I didn't get uh, CP pistons and BC rods, I don't really want to do that. So K1 rods and 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 uh, K1 rods and Wasco pistons, they're they're good. But BC rods and CB pistons is where the power's at if I really wanted to go for it. But again, I didn't get a girl made, so that's a big disappointment. Hopefully next year I can get it made and we'll push for 9 to 1,000 horsepower if this engine survives. If it doesn't, I'm going to show you guys how to do an LS swap and a, and a badass LS swap, okay? And I promise that. So that's it for this video, guys. Um... Next week we'll be back and I'll be installing everything else and hopefully everything uh, works out. Later guys.